Welcome back. I am going into part two now of a new series of Unlocking the Keys. We are going to be talking about beasts. Beast is a huge word today, you know, mark of the beast, think about it. We've really got to get the true biblical insight on this word. So I am beginning a very esoteric, an unpacking of very esoteric information that I believe that people will really ingest this meat of the word and research it themselves. It will explain and put into the big picture just about everything. All the hidden mysteries are coming to the light. Esoteric is another way of saying a hidden mystery. Okay, so esoteric knowledge is like a hidden mystery, but it's coming into the light. It's coming out into the open. So that is why I am doing this series on beasts, but I'm, it, more importantly, it is a series on these two words that are absolutely critical. Living souls. So up on the top on the board behind me, you're going to see. And we're going to stick with the Hebrew words, the root letters in this. We're throwing away the translations. Bless their hearts. Uh, everyone's going to get the reward in heaven. But we have got to get back to the, to the pure language, which is Hebrew. And understand this from the way the letters, in the words, are meant to convey information, which was kept. This is the knowledge the prophets, our sages, our Torah scholars, everybody who wrote, preserved, copied, scribed or the text. Now, so last week I just did this blitz Greek, and I, I told you were, these are the six species, genos, which is a large category. So, yes. While there's fish is the overarching category of a living soul, a real species that Yahweh created. Uh, there's many different kinds of fish. I mean, this is the thing. It's just the variety. It's just such a glory to Yahweh, how unbelievably creative his creation is. Now, again, let me just say this is all on the level of the Ramez and the Sod level. This is a deep, hidden understanding it is for mature believers this is something that teachers in the body uh, in, in both judah and ephraim need to get this understanding so we can uh, you know make all the crooked places all the crooked doctrines all the crooked and straight so this word living souls living 2416 it's the word che it's really che is the aramaic c-h-a-i chai okay um, I just, like lachaim, that's the word for life. It means life. It's translated three large categorical ways: beasts, <laughs> life. I think that's it. Beasts and life and age. Because if you look it up in the Strong's, now I'm going to use the Strong's program. I'm going to go through a blitzkrieg of Bible verses to show you how these are used. And if you if, pray to Yahweh. Pray to the Ruach to open up the eyes of your understanding so that you can see, which means spiritually see and spiritually hear the truth, the sound of the shofar, which is, which is in these words and letters. All right? That's how it's done. All right? We're not talking little. I'm not talking about real fish. I'm not talking about real birds. We're in a deep, encrypted, encoded, esoteric understanding. Okay. The word living is made up of the word, and let's start there. Uh, well, two words go together. The living souls. They're, they're paired up so much as you're going to see. And it is the overarching two Hebrew words to describe everything that Yahweh Elohim, Elohim like in the six days of creation, Everything's coming down the pike, so to speak, into fruition, into manifestation, into physicality. And on the fifth and the sixth day, you start to see whoo, living souls pop out, pop out, pop out of the woodwork, so to speak. All right. And in Genesis, it talks it, um, and it gives them these Hebrew fish, birds, serpents, cattle, creeping things, and atomites. So if you look at it really carefully, get rid of all the translations, basically this is what you end up with. Six species that were made after their kind in the bottom right. I'm saying important words. You just got to just drill this in your brain like the multiplication table. So every time you see this, um, these words, you know exactly, hebraically what we're referring to. It 
after their kind means these are species that were made that were supposed to propagate, multiply, um, reproduce within their kind and only after their kind, which means kind means species. All right. Now, if you're by the litter and all, you know, well, that's what's well, always the case. That is not not everybody in the world has kept Torah on this, has kept this commandment. Okay, so this is why a lot of the problem we have. But Yahweh is in the process, this whole six days of um, the 6,000 years that we've been living through is all a process of how Yahweh has been bringing these living souls, or another way of saying, many sons back into glory, all right? Because there has been a falling away. We left our high estate. This is one of the things. Um, and it says that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth again until the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. All right. So the word living, which is the word che, um, is made up of two Hebrew letters, chet and yod. Now, I'm not going to get it. You know, I have to tell you something. You will never, there is no theology, philosophy, group of writings on the planet that can even hold a candle, in my opinion, to the mystical writings, the deep esoteric writings of the house of Judah, who have kept them in the house, so to speak, all right? I'm talking about the Kabbalah, the Zohar, the many writings, all right? Deep writings that have been kept. Um, the Sefer Yitzhak, the Behir, there are so many famous works that now are coming really out front and center on the radar. Now, you know, I know the Baha'i Gita has a lot of works. There's a lot of it, but they don't hold a candle. I am telling you to the precision, to the accuracy, to the pure stream that has been kept. I say this all the time because this whole study just blows me away more and more. I'm like, I cannot believe the, the level of, it's so like to be able to encrypt, to encode one thing inside another thing inside another thing inside another thing. You think that onion peel, the layers are like that just randomly? No, that's the whole design. That's the whole architect of the way things are. One thing is packed into the next thing, and then everything, right, so we're going to start with het. We're going to start with living, which is made up of het and yod. Het is the eighth letter in the Hebrew alphabet, okay? It is, so eight's very significant, all right? But, and yod is the tenth letter. Now, that's not an accident, because you have one through ten letters, and, and I believe this according to our Agata, our legend, our tradition hebrew judeo-christian it is the letters of hebrew that is hebrew with the original language of creation it is the language of creation all right so everything was made with and these are like a code this is like a chemical i said so it's so true it's like a chemical um like the chemical chart all right so one through ten is again it's a decade it's a separate it's the separate it's not an accident if you know anything about the tree of life the Kabbalist tree of life, one through ten there's ten separate and it says very clearly you know there's 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 not nine there's ten there's not eleven there's ten this is purposely because ten is a perfect number one through ten and then what you can do with it it's a perfect decade and then after that you get again into multiplication into different and this gets into the whole gematria of of the whole language that is so anyways <laughs> i mean there's so much i could go on forever people write volumes all right our sage written volumes on just what i just said it's so deep anyways het is is a word is the eighth letter it contains all the seven letters above it so it, it everything gets more and more contained and condensed and packed together as it comes down the pike so to speak so het is is the the code for all the seven um, Sephiroth above it or the seven level above it are packed into it and then you come on down to the last letter and it's also Yod so all ten so it contains every code everything all the bits of information contained in the tree of life to really go out and to produce this whole amazing creation and all of the things that populate it in Yahweh Elohim's from his mind all the way down not to manifestation so What's interesting when you really study this, why I love Kabbalah, because the physics of it, you can't beat it. It is a language of science and math. And this is what our sci true science is proving today. And as the two get closer and closer, it's going to give Yach tremendous glory. And, and the secularists are going to have to throw up their hands if they want any place in the Olam Haba and said, 
Yes, there is a creator. Yeah, a Yahweh, Elohim, and a, div- a, a very intelligent designer at the top. This, the letter includes, like I said, all the previous letters before it, and that also, you know, there's many levels of meaning. This is another thing, you know, just like I said, there's real fish, we know this, but then I'm telling you there's another whole, many, many levels of fish used, or just as an example. Um, so every word is polysemous, have many, has many meanings, and a lot of times you get the meaning by where you put the vowel point, and where you put the little no, notations on it. But... Um, it, it really what this is, it's a progression of light, light into nature, or life and light. Light and life are really kind of synonymous in the sense it is the light. You know, Yahweh says he, he's the light of the world. He is, he is the life. He's the essence. So if, so if something doesn't have this original high hat and yod in it, but time it's, it's not it's not living. But then again, everything is living. In Yahweh's creation, all right. Huh, don't want to get too lost in this, but you have to look at this the het and the yod together in living. It is like the DNA code, it is, and in each of these codes for all living things, as I'm going to show you, like people know our our code, our DNA code for Adam for, for Adamites. So I'm a human being, I'm an Adamite, is very specific. And if you take one part out of it, I think they say that. But we're very, we share a lot of this stuff. So even, I think I, but that, you know, like a mammal would have 97% of all our genes would be very similar. But those 3% are like a whole world of like many worlds. You can't take that 3% away. It, it, it's how, it's so specific. It's building blocks. If you take one away, the whole house of cards, the whole thing falls. So seed is, is, in the word which is the word zera in the old testament it's the word spermota in the in the new testament in the greek and it does mean dna it does mean seed it does mean sperm because that's where it's contained and the ovum has has eggs the same thing eggs and sperm contain the dna codes and there are their archetypes they're mathematical equations when combined according to what's in their codes we know this the whole the whole dance of life begins for whatever form it is. So that's just sort of flushing out really quickly what is so important in a word. You cannot, you cannot, you have to start here, all right? It's too bad our translators that we, again, I feel like always at such a disadvantage because I don't know Hebrew. I'm always, you know, like a scrapper trying to get up to speed. Um, and the Jews who know this, and, and, and it's so sad you, if you're, that you neglect your own heritage. Oh my gosh, it's your own peril. So now we're going to go into souls. So when these two words are paired up, we are talking about a living, a he, all right, a het and a yod together, the original life force, the light and the life, it's living, that becomes now and becomes a manifest in a soul. It, okay, now this, let me just say this right up front, soul is e- this, this philosophy, this understanding, because the Hebrews taught the world at many points in their history, Solomon was teaching all of the nations of the world the wisdom of Yahweh Elohim, the Kabbalistic mystical wisdom, all right? That's why a lot of this stuff is in other religions, because, you know, we know this from our text. Our great kings and Hezekiah, the times when Israel was at the top of its game, it was the you know, the learning centers, learning center of the world. The Queen of Sheba came to the courts of Solomon to hear his great wisdom, all right? These are things we really have to look at a little more analytically and critically and with understanding and faith. But the word prana, in other cultures, you, you would find the word prana. And I believe, I'm not sure, I think prana is Buddhist. Ki, Q-I. It's also known as ki. And in, in its chai, it, or, in, in, and I forgive me always because I don't know if I have these pronunciations right, but QI, prana, and CHI chai, are all the same nephish, soul life. It's the same program. So all these cultures know this. So that's why you go into Buddhist works, you go into, you know, other Gnostics works, you go into other works, and yes, they seem to have an understanding of this, but it's not the pure stream. So stick, go back to your Hebrew. Quit letting people talk you out of it. Oh my gosh. Anyways, we're not going to go there. See, because it's, it is the life energy force. Nephish. It's the animal soul life. It is the basic, I've said this, it is the number one 
Windows operating system that every living soul gets, like every, every computer has Windows loaded on it. It is the, the, the basic operating system, all right? Now, there's a couple things again, and I've said this last time in all of my videos, there are a couple theological understandings that just, it helps to master right at the get-go so you can really track fast but you have to understand the five words for soul in our text there are five levels of soul life and they have different nuanced means they're all the same nefesh is not ruach ruach is not neshma neshma is not haya all right they're and it's important but so we're staying with nefesh the number you know the first program um you understand the five worlds all right and this is something we know I've been able to the, the four, and it's really the four worlds for our purposes. You know, going into deep, uh, the lower seven, or how do I say this? Uh, for our purposes, it's the four corners, the four principalities, the four powers. You, you know, this is what our text writes how we're talking about four, the four corners, the four realms in which we would have anything to do with, all right? The highest realm where Yahweh, you know, that's that's not for us until the Olam Haba, until the world to come on the eighth day, really. But it's there, but we're not going to interface with it per se. But we can get all the way up to the fourth level. There's some worlds that we can, and our prophets, is the, the prophets of Israel were the one group of, on the planet who were consistently and in holiness and in a way that was sanctified and blessed and put out there by Yahweh Elohim saying these are my prophets listen to them they would get all the way up in consciousness see and there's another answer. these different levels these worlds exist we cannot really ever go there physically per se okay your soul can your soul which prop in your soul is your mind can access this is what different Rambla, this is what our prophets were able to do they were able to access the highest realms of understanding of wisdom of reality in their minds and bring it down for us okay so that's why it is so important now i'm going to do this blitzkrieg boom through uh and we're going to start i'm going to do this program bible hub free basic bible program that but the strong's numbering is in it now i i mean i'm not promoting strong strong's is is good as any to get you in the zone of the Hebrew but from there you're going to have to still um, go into the Hebrew and break it up but what we're going to do is go through probably about 15 verses I'm going to show you over and over again how these living souls are used in our text relate to one another and these living souls huh, this is what we're interfacing. See, this is part for the quote-unquote conspiracy crowd out there. <laughs> All those who are beginning to understand about the Nephilim and the giants and the hybridization that's been going on and about the other species that our government and governments of the world are in contact with, about those things that live under the earth, you know, about... Um, living beings that are coming from the stars. I mean, we're, we're beginning to know all this stuff. It's all coming out again, all right? My goal is to show, this is all in our text. It's not taken. This should not take a literate Bible elect person by surprise at all. And if I can get this out there, and people can get up to speed, okay? So we don't need to go anywhere else. We need to stick with our text, understand this understanding, and now begin to correct a lot of the, the, the wrong teaching, because one of the problems is, what out there with a lot of these YouTube different they're, they're presenting the information wrong in a lot of ways, not necessarily deliberately, because they don't have the first, the fundamental Hebrew understanding. So, and I'll get to this. All right, so we're going to start in Genesis. We're going to go to Genesis. Okay, here we go. Genesis 1, uh, 20. Uh, and it says, and it's the fifth day. Now, I have told you that on the fifth day, Yahweh created fish, birds, and serpents. So if you can, let me just stop this again. At my you, little chart here, fish, birds, and serpents made on the fifth day. They all have he, very specific categories of a, of a species. S cattle, creeping things, and atomites are made on the sixth day. Very important. Okay, so we're going to go back. We're going to pick this up. Now, 
Yahweh said, well, actually, it's the word Elohim. Then Elohim said, let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth in the open expanse of the heavens. Let's just read it. I'll read it in English. God created the likes it's Elohim, and that's another very important word. Yahweh has many names, and it's very, we got to get specific when it uses Elohim. Why? It's Okay, but we're not going to necessarily go there, but I will point this out to you. Elohim created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarmed after their kind, and every winged bird after its kind. And Yahweh saw, Elohim saw that it was good. He blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters in the seas, let the birds multiply, multiply on the earth. It was evening, morning, it was the fifth day. All right, let's go into the Hebrew now. And. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go back here. And let's look at these. Okay, so let's go to... Running a little slow here, but let's go to the Hebrew. And we're going to start to really see now. Elohim. 433. Elohim. All right? It is, it's El plural. And there is a whole Kabbalistic understanding of this why we're not talking about other gods we're not talking about a um a plurality of, of gods what's the word i'm looking for pantheistic all right shema israel adonai eloheinu adonai echad the reason it's elohim is because the word is referring i'll just throw this kabbalistically to bina to the sephirah that is creating now she is the feminine aspect women give birth to things this is the whole this is a systematic theology that follows real principles archetypes real things that go on in nature and so we can follow it very linearly okay this is being she is pregnant she is bringing forth many sons literally is what's going on so so if you've been taught that this Elohim means because there's plural gods that are making mankind, you're wrong. All right, that's not Hebraic. Okay, now Elohim told the waters, this is or Ha Mayim, with an abundance of creatures. Now let's look at this creatures and living. This drives me crazy because I hate these translations. The word living, 2416, this is our word Che. It is living. These are living. Creatures is a bad word. Let's just look at this. This is always like I have said. This is the word nephish. Nephish is a soul. It's a living being, life, self, person, have desire. But basically because those are the programs that run basically our passion, our desire, our appetite. Those are all attributes of the first level of soul that is running that is called nephish. Okay? That is why, and they are always paired together. So what we have here with an abundance of living, uh, with an abundance of nephish, living nephish, living souls. Now, he's going to start, then it always starts to break it down. We have birds. First of all, the fruit, birds. Uh, 5775, uh, let the birds, okay, fly where? Above the earth, okay? And above, it's very important, these prepositions. This is a word, it means, like I said, another important thing to understand is the geography. If something is in, on, upon, or under, that's all clues. Those prepositions are pointers to tell you which dimension these species live in. So birds live in the heavens, the shamayans, which is above, that's why it says above the earth, okay? Um, and across the face, which is the face the, 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 of the firmament of the, of the, and here it is, ha sha mayan, the heavens. Okay? Now, so that was 120. Now let's go 121. Again, we're getting down. So we have so far the living souls that Chai Nefesh has created. Uh, let me see, fish. Well, let's see. One, that's 126. Let me stick with 124. Did I? Like, oh, we're going to get there. All right. So created. So Elohim again created. Created is a different word than make. In fact, remember we are made. We are, we are made, formed, and created in El's image. So those are three, again, Hebrew words. They are different things. They're referring to different parts of our being. Okay. 
Um, when you create, these are Elohim, these are, these are living souls that are being created by Elohim. Now, this word 577, again, we're going to spend a lot of time flushing this out. This is the word sea creatures, great sea creatures, serpent, dragon, sea monster, from the same or the root tan, okay, that it became a serpent. Now, this is, I'll spend a whole session on this maybe because again the, I titled this beast you know angels dragons and serpents what and there are two great if you've read enough of the esoteric texts you understand there were two great sea monsters two great things that were made on the fifth day the Leviathan and the uh, behemoth okay talks about it in Job talks about it in Jeremiah it's not just but it really gives you way more information like in the Kabbalah or in some of the extra biblical texts. So you can really flush this out. All right. So those are something he made on the fifth day. That's a whole nother. Anything with tan in it. All right. I'm telling you, that's a problem. That's a very interesting root word for a species. Any species that has the word tan in it. Okay. T-A-N. And every, again, here we are, every living, 2416-5315, Nefesh, and every living soul. All right, so when it's used living souls, it's sort of like um, we go, from, the text always go from something very specific, sometimes to re-grouping it all back up into its over its archetype. These are living souls. So we just made fish and birds. We made a tan. We made, no, wait, we made serpents and dragons, and we made, Yahweh made birds, okay, which abounded in the waters according to their kinds of, Again, emphasize again, 4327, according to their species. Now, in every bird, again, we're saying it again, every bird, 5775, winged according to its kind. Same word, says species of birds. And Yahweh saw that it was good. Uh, then we get into, and he yeah, bless them, saying, you know, to be fruitful and to multiply and to, you know, fill the seas and fill the... Fill the heavens and fill the earth, all right, with these species. Now, um, there was one thing that I didn't see here. Oh, let me go back to this because we missed fish. Fish is in the in this Genesis text, all right? It is it is the word, and yes, it was the bound the waters. This, the, let the waters abound with... Living, it's this word, 8318. This is a little confusing in here. 8318, uh, hold on a second, let me get mine, is fish. This is living. So we have birds. He made, he made the fish is what I'm trying to say, but they're not called fish in this sense. It comes out later when the, the letter root, well, I'll show you in other places, was DAG, D-A-G, which is the Strong's 1709, 110, 1710, and, one, and 1712. And it's the word DAG, but it is in there because the word Saraz, an abundance, it talks, a lot of times in the fish, see, these are swarmers in a lot of times, some of them are referred to as, but they're just, I mean, fish, they're just like huge swarms, huge abundances of a population. They're not like individual as much. I mean, when you talk about Adam, you're really kind of talking about more individual and a population, but fish are just, they just like, there's always swarms of them. You never see like one fish or other, always in big schools, okay? Like fish are always going to school, whatever. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. Um, I want to plow through all of these. We went through this, the living, the sea creatures tan. Let's go down here to 124, all right? Where again, Yahweh is telling us that's the fifth day. Now we're going to move into the sixth day. Okay. Okay, and he said, bring forth now. We're into the sixth day, and Elohim again says, and again, this is what's so powerful. And again, in the mystical way, Kabbalistic understanding, you'll understand he's called the ten utterances of Yahweh. Ten under I mean he just spoke, and things just woo, just went, started going on their merry way into their pre-destined, pre-prescribed, pre 
you know, way of what they were going to manifest. All right. So Yahweh said, let the earth, another good word to get, it's 776, the, the Eretz. Okay, very important because there's other words that talk about world, that talk about like field, and they have very different nuanced meanings. And you really need to check your translation to see which word is being used so you can kind of try to get the fullest context out of this. Okay, but again here, we are making living the creature, again, translated, it should be translated, in my opinion, soul, because that's the clearest, uh, my opinion, the clearest word, the nephish, so in the, and it's paired up with, with um, living, so it's the living soul, so we're making new living souls, she's telling the earth to bring forth more now living souls, after its kind, again, after its species. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. The BMF, look at this, livestock, all right? 929, let's, this is a word, again, that is so badly translated, it's all over the place. It's a beast, it's an animal, it's a cattle, it's a livestock, oh my gosh, it's all over the place, all right? But basically, we are talking about, the BMF is, for all intents and purposes, uh, this is where, okay, we made fish, we made birds, Yahweh, I keep saying we, I'm sorry, Yahweh, Elohim made fish, he made birds, he made these two great, a behemoth and a leviathan, which we'll just have to totally, that's a whole category by itself, okay, but now he is making livestock, but this is the sixth day, people will tell you um, that all right, so this is the beginning where we're really beginning to get into the pre-Adamic man. All right, so this is starting to clear up everything. Yes, there's a pre-Adamic man. Who do you think Noah, or not Noah, what's his name, Cain, you know, went off and when he married and, and found people to build a city and be a king over? You know, we're talking about pre-Adamic man, okay? This is known as the behemoth. All right, these are the behemoth that they were made on the sixth kind, six day. That's why they're called pre Adamic. All right, so this is a very important word. Um, it's translated livestock, you know. But the thing that's so interesting because this gets in when you really understand behemoth and you understand this, the pre Adamic. I mean, yes, in the book of Enoch, it tells us that with the fallen angels and a lot of the Canaanite um, behemoth. They harbored out between Adams, the Behemoths, and the fallen angels. They were sinning against all of these different species. The fish, it says, this, this is what he's saying about the sin against the fish and the birds and the creeping things and the livestock and all this. Because they're all now starting, this is all pre flood they're starting to all mix their species with each other, all right, which just created a huge mess. And that's why, you know, look, I, I just, this isn't the way it can go. It can't go this way. All right, you guys are just mess. So that's, but when you understand the word 929, Bima, because it's going to, when we get later on, I'm going to go back to the, because this really is the mix becomes, this is where we get the root of the mixed multitude and of the Gentiles. All right, this is so important, understand, because it begins to explain why, and when you read a lot of extra books, why they're like so, um, you know, I mean, it's, in, in a lot of the texts, like Israel, you, know, you got to reproduce after your con. You, know, you can't go marry those Canaanite women, and you can't, you know, Ishmael got in so much trouble because he went out and married, you know, outside his species, his kind. This is what's going on. These are all sons. I'm telling you what you're going to see. Yahweh loves all of his sons, but at the same time, Yahweh is the father. He sets the rules for the house, and he set them, and he gave to the firstborn, to the Adamites, and, and, and like in this one, the, the, the manager of the household kind of role, okay? I, I, I just don't argue with the text. It's the way it is, okay? So this is an important word to start to see. And now this other one, creeping things. This is the 7431, made on the sixth day, creeping things. Ramez, or sometimes translated Ramaz. It's 7431 or 30. These creeping things. Now this is a lot. I should have had this other book I was reading really about pre-Adamic man. Every culture talks about, you know, the little people, or there were, you know, oh my gosh, there's so much, but, you know, humanoid living, that live in, in rocks, in trees, in caves, and under the earth. There's a whole species, there is a whole, 
you know, and, and our texts talk about this, and, and much of the literature of the pagan nations talk about this, all right? This is where sometimes this is very real, okay? So, and you, this is why I said in one way this can be politically incorrect, but it's not, because everything, I always said everything was good. When he created it originally, if everything had stayed with, it's beautiful, it's good. There are many, he is bringing many sons to glory, all right? Think about it this way in your body. You have so many different kinds of cells that do different functions and do different things. Like, and this is what Paul is trying to say. Look, just because you're not the way you're going to cut your foot off, just because it's not the head and you think, oh, you know what? No, you need the whole thing. Everything is needed. Everything is important. Everything is in its place. Everything has a glory. Everybody, you know, okay, keep moving. Don't want to keep preaching here. But, okay, so, and the beast of the earth. And, now this is another one, 2416. This is where 2416 is translated beast. All right, as opposed to creature or living. And this is a really, this is why there's so much confusion. Because this translation of beast, beast of the earth, there's a lot of times and later on in the text I'll talk about the wild beasts of the field. This was where we get into the tan, that root word for serpents and dragons, and what they were doing in the creation. And this is a way, a very interesting way in which the prophets have been able to track <laughs> their movement, let's just say, their species movement through history. A lot of ways, it's one way, okay? So, but I, so you, I just wanted to point that out. These are living these are beasts, but it's not the word behemoth. What I want you to see, it's not 929, which is sometimes translated beast, but it's really the word livestock, cattle, which is in a sense. The reason they use the word cattle, oxen, these animals, and this is why I keep saying it comes back to the Gentiles, because these are domesticated animals. The concept of a behemoth, these are domesticated animals that man, that we live with, that, that we actually have a very close relationship with, especially if we were more back to the earth living in this in this agrarian farming where where it was a two-way relationship we needed the beast the beast needed us we all lived together and and made life together all right this is a very important concept but they're domesticated they're not they're not against us i mean yeah you a bull you get him in heat but that's different but i'm saying sheep and well, that's why you'll see that sheep is a whole, but, but by and large, cattle are very docile. They're not going to hurt you, all right? They're, they're, they, you can live with them very comfortably, very peacefully, all right? That's not necessarily the same thing as with these wild beasts of the field. You cannot live peacefully with them at this point. But this is what it's referring to when it says that on his holy mountain, finally everything's wrapped up, you know, the little child will be, will be able to play with the adder, which is, I forgot to look up what that word was, and with the beast or with the lion, you know, all these different species will be living together in harmony. But that's not the case right now. So, and everything that these were made according to their kind, and it was so, all right? So we just now made the behemoth. We just made the, um, these, he didn't make them, but he just pointed out very, this is what these, see, they pointed out very, Subtly. I mean, if you're not on top, if you're not on the ball, it's going to go right over your head. Boosh. These beasts of the earth, all right? doesn't say, okay, now, according to its kind and livestock and everything that, no, it's just repeating. And a lot of times the text will repeat stuff just because two establishes a matter. So with two witnesses, right there in the text, there's two witnesses. Nobody's confused. Again, we're going to go over, like, teaching the kindergarten. Okay, we're talking, he made the behemoth, the 929s, after their kind. Then he made the creeping things, the 7431, after their kind, and then he's in it, saw that it was all good. Okay? Now we're going to go into, and then, now he kicks it up a notch. Then Yahweh said, let us, and this again, this is a whole us, plural, um, let us make man Adam. Again, here we go, 120, the Adamic man, all right? Um, in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over, who? Rule over what? over the fish, the other species, the other sons, really and truly, in the father's household. There's so many ways this is all referred to. This is where I said it, these are the armies. When we get to the end of this thing, I'll show you the prophets referred. Okay, so what he just created, one way is all the armies of Elohim. These are all, um, 
all of the souls of Elohim, then he made all the sons of Elohim. All right. So, but we've got here, we've got uh, fish. We've got the, in the sea. Everybody's got a geographic location. It's a different dimension. All right. Birds are in the Hashemayans, the heavens, right? And the livestock is on the earth. Okay. And so, when, and the creeping things that creep on the earth. Now, creeping things too is referred, sometimes they're, the planes are so low to the ground. See, this is the kind of the difference between a two-footed shows that its its head is higher. A lot of times they're doing something that is four-footed is lower, closer to the earth, meaning it's 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 less. It's it's I mean there's higher always. So if you have a two-footed an upright, that's why when it talks about the upright man is a higher ordered creature than the four-footed. They're lower, they're on four feet, but then you get down to these creeping things, and these things got eight feet. These things sometimes don't even have feet. They slither on the ground. This is the point. They're very low to the ground, all right? So uh, these are all things on the earth, all right? Now, um, and so Yahweh, Elohim created this man in his own image, and like us again, repeating it. In, in the image of Elohim, he could male and female. I'll just tell you a little secret. The word image and the word likeness are actually on one level code words to mean um, male and female. Again, image is male, likeness is female. I can't get into that. Someday I'm going to be teaching some deeper Kabbalistic uh, classes and we can get into all that.